Hello, so this is gonna be my last um, video of this portrait. Um, if I were doing this for a commission work or something, I probably would spend another 30 hours on this. Um, and you might ask yourself why, you know, it, it, it looks like it's starting to come around. Um, you just, you sort of labor over it and, um, you know, it's not that it has to be perfect, but you have to really wanna kind of button up all of your loose ends and, and make sure that, um, you know, everything is uh, where you want it to be. Um, a lot of times in the process of working on something like this, you, you have um, what I consider to be kind of happy accidents. So some really good things happen that you're, you know, that you didn't really plan on or you didn't necessarily have control of. And then, uh, of course, a lot of times uh, things happen that you wish would not happen. Um, and that's when you get into that kind of recovery mode um, and you're trying to, you know, uh, shore up problems and resolve them. And so a lot of times when you look at your look back at the process of making your portrait, um, there, you know, there are times where you, you, know, you probably go through bit by bit and explain to somebody, you know, boy, this nose here, I just really had a hard time with, or, you know, this part of the hair was just really fighting me the whole time. And, you know, that, that can be uh, kind of part of the fun. Um, sometimes it does get frustrating and things just don't go, they're not going your way and you, you, you almost get to the point where you're ready to just quit because you, you feel like you've tried to fix something so many times. Um, if that does happen, you know, definitely let me know. And, you know, maybe just a, a fresh set of eyes can come in and uh, help you see something that you're not seeing or perhaps come up with a way to uh, solve a problem you're having um, that, uh, again, that fresh set of eyes can, can, uh, can do that. It maybe it doesn't even have to be me, maybe ask a, someone in the class or you know some a friend of yours show them a picture of it um, but you can see i'm putting this dark background in here and when you uh when you put your background in you can put any background you want you don't have to there's really no rhyme or reason i'm i'm sort of borrowing from some of the colors in the portrait um, i don't want this hard edge here i don't want a hard edge between her hair and the uh background so I, I want to have a little bit more of a natural and I can even sort of borrow from, um, borrow from the photo and kind of put a couple, couple little runaways in there, whatever, um, just to kind of make it look a little bit more natural. So be careful that you're not just, you know, going in and putting this really hard edge in here and then just kind of leaving it. It's, it's going to look, it's going to make, it's going to flatten out your portrait. It's going to make your portrait look uh, uh, much less believable. So you just kind of add a couple flyaways in there just to kind of break it up a bit so that it kind of just naturally goes into that dark background or really whatever background you want. So that's an important part of it. Um, another thing that I wanted to show in this uh, last video here is just kind of how you can use glazes to go in and make some changes if you if you see fit or you, you see, feel that you need to do. Um, the way you make a glaze is simply just thinning down your paint and making it more watery, making it more transparent. Um, for example here, if I take um, some white, let's say I wanna add some highlights, but I don't wanna get too deep into reinventing the wheel or repainting any real part of the painting. So let's say that I'm gonna just make this kind of pinkish, um, orangey kind of highlight. I'm gonna add a bunch more white and I could have different versions of this. Clean your brush out pretty decently. And then so that it's not real heavy paint, let's go through and add quite a bit of, uh, Natalie, if you can get a close up shot of that, you can see that this is really transparent, okay? So when you paint it, you should be able to really see that foil through there. It's very watery, okay? And what you can do then is you can select areas. Let's say I want her nose, part of her nose to sort of pop a little bit more. I can come in here like this and just get that to happen. 
okay? Let's say on her chin here, it just needs to be a little bit brighter. So I can put that in there on her lip here a little bit more, maybe just right up here on the cheek. So I get that highlight in there without having to really overwork it. Then what I can do is I can dry my brush out. I'm actually gonna grab a slightly darker version of the same color and I can kind of dry brush it down into there. All right, looking at my photo as I go. And again, just kind of cheating and dry brushing a little bit. Now by dry brushing, I mean it's almost like you're drawing on the painting and just kind of carefully going over and lightening things up just a bit. I'm gonna go ahead while I'm at it, I'm gonna grab a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow and create a deeper orange here. Get that turpentine going and I can go ahead and what's, what's called key up areas of the painting. So I can come in here and lighten this up, but I'm also going to bring a little bit of this kind of orange into the, into the painting, which will add it and make it a little bit more colorful. So if your painting is appearing a little drab or uh, not quite as colorful as you had hoped for, um, you can take these glazes and get in here and kind of turn up the, the color a little bit more, make it more uh, vibrant without having to, um, without having to re-wet re the whole area or repaint the whole area. You find yourself then kind of going in and you can use these, you don't want to, you don't want to use them all everywhere all the time, but you can use these little glazes towards the end just to make your little adjustments. Okay, I want to kind of soften that shadow under her nose there. All right, make it not so abrupt. All right, um, let's say I wanted a little highlight up on the bridge of her nose there. I need to get that proper color. Okay, so I'm going to experiment with that. I'm going to grab a, uh, it's a little bit more of actually a greenish kind of light color. Again, get maybe even try with a dry brush so it's not so wet. And I can come up here. and just get up in there and kind of add a little bit of a highlight up in here. All right, kind of don't like that. So another thing you guys can do if that happens is, is you can actually take a little paper towel and if you don't like what you just did, which I don't like what I just did, I'm going to take it off, okay? And I can also make a darker version of the same color pretty quickly because I got my palette all right here and I'm just going to go ahead and knock that back down looking at the photo as I do it okay just so it makes a little more sense and sometimes if you do that you might want to kind of disperse that color in other areas come around here we can lighten this up just a bit just ever so softly kind of just put a little bit of an echo of a highlight. Okay, right in here we could dry brush into this area a little bit. Maybe under that eye. There like that. Okay. If it gets a little dark on us. Or a little light I should say. Okay. Take my finger and just kind of push it down. Now, these are some of the final touches. And again, I probably would spend more time with this painting uh, if this were a commission work or something. I mean, just put a little bit more attention to it. I probably got a little over an hour into this thing. But you get the general idea, okay? Um, a lot of this hair, <coughs> hair is wet too. And what I can do here is I can go ahead and take some of that turpentine and come in and just kind of emulate some of these strokes. Okay, go in and pick out the big things. You can put in some of the finer strokes here and there. And just kind of work the surface of the painting. You don't want to, you don't want to get too freestyle where you're not paying attention to what you're doing. 
but you want to get in there and just kind of make sure that you've got a lot of your big high and low lights and then the rest of it you can just go in and, and kind of work some lights and darks up into areas. If you've got a real hard edge somewhere, I've got a light here that I want to get. So I want to get this bright up in here. Okay, nice highlight. That was one that I forgot there. This here, pull some of that out like that. Again, using these glazes, fairly easy. Coming through in here, looking at that shape right there, and just kind of get in there and work it up a little bit more. Okay. We don't want a super hard edge right here, so I'm going to take just a little bit of a glaze and just kind of run it through like that. Get a little bit more of a highlight in this hair. I can use a glaze again. So we'll take a nice glaze like this, not, not a ton of paint on this, and we're just going to get some of these highlights to pop just a little bit more. Want that one to pop, maybe down here that sunlight is just hitting this directly right here I want that to pop just a little bit more um, there's a couple up in here okay it just gets them to just jump off the page just a little bit more right there there's one right here kind of back in there and you gotta get it to sort of fade away like that. So we want that light coming forward and we want that dark receding back. That's one of the things that I've actually struggled with a little bit in this painting is just trying to get all this to behave. I, even now, I mean, I, my darks need to be darker yet. The, the lights on the side of her face are coming forward. We wanna push that back, but generally, um, you know, I'm fairly happy with, with some of the results I'm getting here. Oh, I can even take a, a glaze. Let's grab like a, a, a little blue just quickly. Take a little glaze like this, real thin glaze, watery glaze, and just work between, let's go even waterier. Okay, even more turpentine. And just kind of break up that hard edge between the uh, jacket and, and her chest there just so we don't have that hard edge like that. Okay. So those are just some tips on how to kind of close out the painting. Um, every time that you go to add um, new things or you want to add a highlight or a low light, you just have to be you know, pretty cognizant, pretty aware of how the, the um, paint is behaving and also just paying real close attention to the um, the, the features that you're trying to paint so that you're you're not getting off the script so to so to speak and um, and getting yourself into trouble okay so you can freestyle a little bit with this but if again if you do it too much you're gonna you're gonna paint yourself into a into a tough spot so just be real careful with that um, as you are doing this um, so that you stay on track and you can finish the painting nicely it just it all sort of comes together. Once in a while though, like this little spot right here is just kind of fighting me a little bit. Let me get a little bit greener. Okay. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. Looks like I need a little warmth in here. So I'm gonna bring, take out some of that green. A little too much green there. So I just wanna push that out a little bit more. Um, again, we could just keep going in here, but um, I think that's about it. So you just keep trying, just keep getting it going, trying to get this thing to behave. Push some of those back into that dark there. Get that back into that dark there. Maybe we got a little straggler that kind of comes down in front there, make it look a little more natural. Again, getting my cues from my photograph. I'm not just making this stuff up. 
I might fudge it a little bit, but I'm not making it up completely. Okay. So there's your, your uh, photograph and kind of the, the painting. And, and uh, I don't know if you're getting, uh, Natalie, if you're getting some glare there, but if you want to get a picture from the front there, I just kind of check that out. So hopefully you have success on this. It's a challenging painting. Just stick with the, the plan. Really lean heavily on your photo. Get all of your cues from your photo. Make sure that you're using your color matching. Uh, putting the holes up to there whenever you are unsure or even maybe every time in the beginning and trying to match those colors um, to avoid getting too far off with your hue and your tone. So thanks and uh, good luck.